Hey everybody, this is TJ from Midlife Carding Crisis. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the top three things I think you should be doing in the off season to set yourself up for success next spring. So before we go any further, make sure you scroll down, you click subscribe. Also, make sure you click the notification bell. That way you won't miss any of the valuable information I'm going to be sharing with you absolutely free right here on Midlife Carding Crisis YouTube channel. Number one. Take your cart down to the bare frame and inspect each and every part on that cart. This is the time to do it. We don't have a race next week, probably don't even have one next month. For most of the country, you're not going to have a race for another four to six months at the minimum. Now is the time when we have the luxury of not being rushed to literally go over every single nut, every single bolt, every single bearing, every single rod in on your cart. This is going to do a couple of different things. Number one, this is going to help familiarize yourself with all the parts and pieces on your cart. As you start to feel things through the steering wheel and through the seat moving forward, you're going to have a much better idea of what you're feeling and what is affecting that. And that's going to go a long way in helping you dial in the handling of your cart. The other thing it's going to do is certainly going to prevent future failures. For example, rod ends become worn out. It's very difficult to tell until you take the rod end off and you can twirl it around in your hand. Same thing with something like axle bearings. This is a great opportunity just to go ahead and change those out for the next season. Axle bearings are relatively inexpensive. Uh, most carts have either two or three rear bearings. Chances are better not, you can probably change all those out for right around $100, maybe a little less. As you take those off, by putting new ones on, you know you're getting something that's absolutely fresh with zero time, zero miles on it, zero wear and fatigue. Plus, as you go through what's left over and you check those out for any resistance, any crunchy feeling as you turn them around, the ones that are still good, you want to clean those up, hit them with a nice layer of some type of metal protectant. I always prefer Amsoil metal protectant. Wrap those up, put them in a baggie, put them in uh, some kind of an airtight container, and now you know you have some quality spares in the event you need them for next season. Surface plate is the second part of this. Uh, any cart shop can turn you on to somebody that's got a surface plate. Your cart has no suspension, which means all the twisting and torquing forces that your cart goes through and cornering, or heaven forbid, when you hit things on the racetrack, are absorbed through that cart. At some point, the frame is going to start to twist and bend. Uh, this is pretty normal. It's easily fixed. For, again, for usually for around $200, maybe a little less, you can have a professional put your cart up on a surface plate. They can measure all the different points and correct any twisting or torquing that's happened to that frame and get you back to where you're, your frame, you're starting the season anyway, with a straight, squared up frame. This is going to make dialing your chassis in so much easier. If you bought used equipment and you didn't have it put on a surface plate and you've been having issues handling, there's a good chance it just needs to be straightened out. Again, it's not a huge procedure. Typically, it can be done for $200 or less. If you don't know anybody that's got one, uh, call around a couple different cart shops. If they don't offer that service, they certainly can point you in the direction they can. Uh, if you're in the Midwest, uh, particularly in around the Chicago area, Chicago Cart Technologies. Jim Perry offers that service. Great place to go. The guy knows exactly what he's doing. If you're not in that area, like I said, a couple of phone calls, emails, or you can just put out a blast on one of the cart social media pages you follow. Someone's going to hit you back with a referral, somebody that can get you taken care of. Physical training. I cannot overemphasize the importance of physical training. I'm talking about everything from core strength to grip strength to neck strength. All these things are going to make you a substantially better race driver, and I could do a whole video on that. In fact, I think I'm going to do that. That will be their next video. It's going to be the importance of physical training. Let's just start with this. Number one, if you are overweight in your class, the easiest way to lose weight and get benefit from it is going to be to lose a little body weight, which is going to also strengthen your body. We can never have enough grip strength. We can never have enough neck strength. Strengthening your neck is going to be something that's going to help prevent injuries, not to mention it's very hard to drive when your head's flopping around like a bobblehead going around corners. Physical training, again, I cannot overemphasize that. Uh, there are great programs. Of course, you know I'm going to tell you about my good friends at PitFit. I'm going to include a link to PitFit right, eh, right about there. Click on that. They've got all kinds of different programs. These are the guys that train most of the IndyCar Series drivers and a substantial portion of what used to be the Mazda Road to Indy. They have all kinds of training programs designed for kart racers to where you can literally do it online. If you can't afford that, for $10, you can join a gym somewhere in your area to where you can go get some physical training. And most memberships include some type of 
orientation where they can show you how to use the equipment. And let's not forget about the valuable resource we have right here on YouTube. There are a lot of great workout programs, and to get you started along those lines, there's even some of them tailored to motorsports. Again, if you can afford it and it's in your budget, I would definitely recommend getting a hold of the guys at Pit Fit. Uh, they train racers, they know what they're doing. However, do the next best thing if you can't do that, but do some type of physical training. Lose some body weight. It's always going to make you a better race driver, not to mention it's going to pay you dividends in the rest of your life outside of the racetrack. My third tip is to review video footage of your racing and others who race in the same series or at the same racetracks you do. Over the winter, there is nothing more valuable than breaking down game film, as I call it. All major sports do this on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. It can be a little difficult to do in the heat of the racing season because you're so busy with your job, your cart prep, and getting to the racetrack. However, we have an off season. This is a great time to sit back and go back and watch uh, any of your GoPro footage, cam box, whatever your camera is. Go back and watch it. I also recommend getting a hold of somebody that you trust or somebody you respect as a driver. Ask them to watch a couple of your videos and to give you some notes and feedback. Another very valuable thing along this line is to watch some of the other racers that you compete against, in particular guys that finish ahead of you. There is a ton you can learn not only about driving, but you can hear gearing, you can hear all kinds of different things uh, by simply watching and listening. Uh, I know my favorite time to do this is when I'm on the treadmill doing cardio. Uh, it's a nice distraction. It passes a lot of times. I'll go back. Uh, the first year that I ran the championship Enduro Series, I didn't know any of the racetracks, so I was able to grab uh, videos off of YouTube and watch what the other guys were doing. It gave me some basic idea of the layout of the racetrack. Uh, it made learning those tracks substantially quicker. Uh, my second year, I had a whole catalog of my own racing events. I could go back and watch and look for things I was doing wrong. Uh, was I lifting too early? Was I turning in too early? Uh, did my motor sound right? Uh, if you have some type of a uh, helmet attached camera, a lot of times you can see the tack and the display, and this can be a valuable, valuable source of information. But again, uh, watching these videos, watching other people's videos are only going to improve you, and it gives you a leg up on the competition who's not doing this when you move into next season. So again, these are my three tips of things that you should be doing in your off season. Uh, I would be very interested to hear if you think of anything I missed. What are some things that you do to keep yourself sharp, to prepare yourself for next season? If you could leave that down in the comments, uh, I'd appreciate it. I will read every one of them. I'll try to respond to the ones I can. But uh, let's share some information. Share this video if you found something useful in it. And again, make sure you go down and click the subscribe button, click the notification button, so that way you don't miss anything uh, that we release here on Midlife Karting Crisis. We'll talk to you again real soon.